In last week's video, I talked about the one thing that you need and are probably missing in order to go from an artist who paints as a hobby to a full-time professional. And that one thing was a body of work in a consistent style. So today, let's talk about how you go about actually building that body of work and creating that consistency. In this video, I'm gonna go over the three primary steps that are essential to get you there, and I'm going to address some FAQs that came up in the comments of last week's video. All right, so let's say that after last week's video, you gave that a watch and you thought, okay, like this makes sense. I understand why having consistency would be important from the perspective of somebody who wants to be able to make reliable, good income from their artwork. Um, and essentially what this boils down to is that if you need to be able to make predictable income, which you probably do if you want to be a full-time professional at this, you need to be creating work that is consistent. Um, consistent work yields consistent income. Um, if you want to be exploring a variety of styles, this either might be something that's a hobby for you. Um, so if you kind of want to be in an exploratory phase where you don't necessarily have a singular body of work that's consistent because um, you're too busy exploring, that makes total sense. That probably isn't what you're going to need in order to make a full-time income from this. Um, at least not if you're pursuing a fairly traditional path of making money from your work by selling it or taking commissions. Now, the other possibility is that you are either an artist who is seriously prolific or you have been painting long enough that you've explored several styles. But what I would say to that is that you still need to be able to present at least 10 to 15 consistent pieces from a quality perspective and a stylistic perspective if you're going to a gallery or if you are presenting a series of work that's available for sale directly to collectors. And let's look at this from the gallery's perspective. If a gallery is considering working with you, they are running a business. Um, like, frankly, galleries typically aren't there to further the arts or bring in somebody who is super experimental. They need to keep the lights on. Um, and so if they bring on a person, they need to understand based on that person's work, is this a fit for their clientele? And is it going to remain a fit for their clientele over time? So the best way you can do that is to show up at their gallery with a body of work that says, this is who I am and this is who I'm going to continue to be, um, even if you are growing and evolving over time. If you show up to the gallery with like four different styles of work, the gallery might see one that interests them, um, and chances are it probably would just be one, but that gallery might worry that you might not be able to produce the style that they're interested in consistently because you are bouncing between so many. So if you're at the stage where it's really important for you to be constantly jumping between styles, it might not be the ideal time for you to think about going full time. So the very first step from here is to actually get a clear goal of what kind of style you want to be presenting to the gallery or to collectors directly. You might continue to experiment or push your craft or try new things on the side, but it's really important that you first get very clear on what direction you want to take your artwork. And the reason for this is that it's very difficult to actually arrive at a level with your work that is worthy of being a goal if you don't have that goal set in the first place. Striving towards something that is genuinely exciting for both you and the collector probably isn't something you are going to stumble upon by chance. Um, there might be a couple of chance components like you discover an interesting technique, but by and large, your painting practice really needs to be underpinned by intentionality. Um, and the way that we can keep that practice intentional and we can keep the body of work that you're creating cohesive is we need to go ahead and get clear on what that is from the beginning, what exactly this work looks like. Now, my favorite way to do this for myself and with the students that I coach 
is to go ahead and have a compilation of paintings that serve as inspiration. And I really like this approach because I want to be able to see the kinds of paintings I'm working toward. I don't want a written description. I don't want, you know, a series of like abstract descriptions um, to characterize this work. I want to be able to look at something and say like, yes, this is hitting all of the important benchmarks that I'm interested in. When I look at it, I'm really moved by it. And on top of that, I can thoughtfully analyze these kinds of paintings to understand what I'm moving toward. Now, if you're curious what this looks like in practice, I have an entire masterclass that I have linked in the description that walks you through exactly how I put together that inspiration board that visually captures what I'm looking for in a goal um, because it's it's a little bit much to pack into one YouTube video. Um, so if you really want the nitty gritty of like how I do this, what it looks like specifically for me and how I analyze it to get the most out of it, be sure to check out that masterclass. But to describe it really briefly, what I use for myself is a Pinterest board. That Pinterest board has all of my favorite paintings on it, and I've been very intentional in terms of which paintings make the cut on this board and which don't. Um, I go into more detail on this and how I sort them in the masterclass itself, but in short, the paintings that I look at for my inspiration are the ones that I feel like I cannot live without bringing into my own work in some way. Like, I want the experience of making that kind of painting. And so when I look at my Pinterest board that serves as inspiration for me, I see a lot of Daniel Keyes, Richard Schmidt, Kwong Ho, Carolyn Anderson, um, painters who really emphasize expressive brushwork first and really celebrate the paint texture in ways that I'm drawn to and that I find really interesting. And beyond that, I see a lot of consistency in terms of the subject matter. Um, so as you can imagine from my YouTube channel, I am essentially interested in painting two subjects, portraits and horses. Um, I'm also interested in dancers, although it's not a direction that I've pushed into in a big way yet. Um, so I have a very set idea of what range of subjects I'm interested in exploring. And in terms of the style, I see the same kind of lighting in terms of the temperature of that lighting. I see the same sort of high key tendency in the pieces. Um, I see a real emphasis on abstract brushwork, especially in the background and backgrounds that vignette the subject. For me, having this degree of clarity in my goal really sets me up for success when I'm planning my own pieces. I know what I need as far as a reference. I know the technique or process that I'm going to use to go from idea to finish painting on the canvas. And beyond that, if I need to build specific skills in order to really be where I want with this style, because I've done this thoughtful analysis already, I can break down all the component parts of the style that I'm moving toward, and I can give myself exercises designed to let me build those skills on an individual basis. And in that way, I'm not leaving this idea of like how to build a consistent style and a consistent body of work up to chance. I am breaking it down into every step-by-step -step component so that I make sure that I get to where I need to be. And this is the same thing that you are going to want for yourself in your own practice. If you really want to take this seriously as a professional, we need to practice like professionals. And that means coming to your painting practice, coming to your easel as thoughtfully as possible and intentionally as possible. All right, so once you are clear on your goal, we need to go ahead and put in the practice necessary to solidify this way of working and bridge any skill gaps that you might have between the way you're working currently and the consistent style that you want from your own work. Now, I tend to break down the areas that we could stand to get some practice in into three different domains. The first is composition and planning. Um, so basically the sort of soft abstract thinking skills that we need to set ourselves up for success in a painting and make sure that we're not leaving unnecessary things to chance in terms of how that painting comes to completion. 
The second thing is going to be the hard technical physical skills that you need in order to create the kind of painting that you want. So if you want to use loose brushwork, for instance, you're going to need to get a really intuitive feel for how your brushes feel, what consistency of paint you want, um, how you can really feel like you have control over all of your tools and over your medium. And then the final category are abstract skills that are kind of in the middle. Um, I would call these skills relative to the elements of design. Um, essentially, the core components of realism. So these are skills that are somewhat physical skills and somewhat abstract skills. Things like your ability to draw accurately, um, mix accurate values, match color effectively, understand what kind of edges you need to have in your particular painting. As you can probably surmise, these aren't really skills that have a ton to do with your control of the brush or your control of your palette, at least not once you have a basic level of comfort with those things. These are more skills that are happening inside your mind, but they are very specifically related to your craft. So your ability to accurately assess proportions and get in an accurate drawing, that's mostly happening in your head. That's not a skill that's happening in your hand. Um, same thing with mixing values, mixing color. All of those things really come down to your decision making, um, but it is a skill set that's very specific to art. And I think this is what sort of distinguishes it from the composition and planning skills, which I think are a little bit more general, more higher level. Um, and you could have these sorts of skills whether you are an artist or not. Now, regardless of which domain the skills you need to build fall into, I find it's really most helpful to go ahead and fully tease all of those things apart and understand which skills need to really be developed first and to give yourself the space to develop all of those skills separately. So essentially isolating each individual skill as its own variable. So for instance, if I want to get really loose expressive brushwork in something like portraiture, what is really most helpful is to first understand what are all of the components that go into being able to do that effectively. Well, one, in any kind of portraiture, it's really important if your focus is realism to be able to get an accurate drawing. That is where most of your likeness is going to come from. You also need to be able to back that up with intentional values as well as intentional color. And then the final kind of cherry on top is to be able to really control the brushwork to get that expressive version of that person's face onto the canvas. So if this is a struggle, I would go ahead and break this down and I would ask, is the drawing an issue here? Because you could put down the most expressive brushwork in the world but if you have to go back and fix your drawing later, you're gonna to have to go back and cover up that brushwork that you worked so hard for in the first place, and it's easy for that to become overworked. Same thing if you realize that your values are off or your color mixtures are off. And so if you realize that you are working too tight or your paintings feel muddy or overworked, I would go, for myself, I would go back down this process um, starting from drawing and I would really get clear on each individual skill that might be contributing to this problem. And I would say, okay, I'm gonna not worry about the brushwork for just a minute, and I'm gonna make sure my drawing skills are where they need to be. And then get that to a good place through exercises that are designed and specifically to help you build your drawing skills. Then I would do the same process for value and then for color. And then once everything else was dialed in and I wasn't having to go back and rework all of those individual areas, then I would go ahead and take a look at exercises for developing looseness now that you have the foundational skills to really back that up. Now, if you are curious what exercises might help you build these skills or you realize that you could really use an extra set of eyes to fully break down what skills you might need work on, this is where a mentor can really come in handy. Um, I have a video all about what makes a really effective mentor that I will link up above. And if you are interested in getting my help as a mentor, I have a link below in the description for you to reach out to me so that we can see if it's a fit. All right, and then 
once you are clear on your style and that has enabled you to get very clear on what skills and techniques you need to develop and you've gone ahead and implemented that and your skills are all where they need to be for you to work in that goal style, it's time for you to turn that into a body of work. So if you have been doing all of the work effectively up until this point, this should be a little bit of a no-brainer. Like you've been you've been building your way up here the whole time. Now it's just time to go ahead and plan a series of 10 to 20 pieces that you could use to show to a gallery or to put on your website's homepage to really show the world who you are and what you're all about as an artist. And if you've done that work really effectively up until this point, you really shouldn't have questions about, okay, well, what do I paint? Or how do I want to paint it? Or even like what themes or emotions are going to come out of this particular body of work because these are going to be things that you identified at the very beginning when you got clear on your goal and they should be things that you've been practicing this whole time. So putting together these 10 to 20 pieces shouldn't feel like something super new. In fact, you've probably already in the process of building your skills created some pieces that are a fit for this body of work. Once you're here, the final step I would say would be to look at all of the pieces you intend to have in this series and go ahead and pick out at least a quarter of them, if not more, so that you are looking at only the strongest of that bunch. That would be the final step that I would take before considering bringing work to a gallery. I would make sure that I'm only putting my best foot forward um, and that any pieces that look a little bit weaker, I am keeping to myself. Um, if I had a really great idea for that piece or it's really special to me in some way, I would go ahead and think about how to effectively rework that piece and I wouldn't put it in front of people until it were really ready. Once you are at this point, you have a body of work that is consistent both quality-wise and style-wise, you are happy with this way of working and this is something that's sustainable for you in the long run, then I would say you're able to go ahead and switch gears and think about the marketing. Now that's a completely separate video, so that's where I'm gonna cut this one off. If you have marketing questions, let me know in the description and if we have enough of them, I can go ahead and look at putting together a video around that. That being said, my specialty is really on helping artists to get to the point where they have a body of work that is ready to market and that makes the marketing as easy as possible because the work really speaks for itself. And I would really encourage you to keep that as your focus because I think most of you are probably here because of your love of painting and your desire to pour energy into that. Um, not necessarily because of your love of marketing and your desire to pour energy into that. That being said, the two avenues most artists use would be to either have the gallery market the work for you um, or to have a go at it yourself and market work directly to collectors, either online or by appearing in person at like local art fairs, um, shows, things like that. And now that we've covered those three primary steps to get your professional body of work together, I wanna go ahead and address some of the FAQs from the last video. Um, so the first question I want to address is how much should you cater to a given market? This is a really good question. Um, I, I speak to this quite a lot. In fact, I have a video that addresses this directly that I'm gonna go ahead and link um, up above in, in the upper right hand corner of this video. I would suggest checking that out because that's gonna give you a really in-depth version of this answer with a couple of examples. But in short, what I find is most beneficial to the painter, what's most enjoyable to the painter, and what typically yields the most commercial success is for that painter to really tap into what they are excited about. And then from there, you know, we live in a global economy. From there, you can find galleries all over the world that you can send your work to who are probably connected with the kind of audience you need for that work. The other way to do this would be to just think locally and think in terms of your local gallery. If that's really where you wanna focus your time and effort, then I think it is probably gonna be really important for you to go ahead and look at what the local trends are in your community, what sells, what's in demand. But 
this isn't really where I like spending my time or energy or directing the artists that I work with. I find that it's ultimately less fulfilling. So no, you really don't need to cater to a given market, but you do want to be presenting your work in the market that makes sense for that work. So that might require a little bit of legwork to find the right gallery. Ideally, the galleries you reach out to will tell you if they have an audience for your kind of work. And then once you figure out where your people are, that work is done and you can really focus your effort and energy on creating the kinds of pieces that you're going to really be rewarded in making. All right, next question. What if you have two or more styles? So this I addressed a little bit earlier in this video, but I would say ideally, like if you're presenting work to a gallery, for instance, I would figure out which style is a better fit Make sure you have a solid body of work in that style and present that to the gallery. I think the more scattered or varied the work is, the less confident the gallery is going to be that you are going to be able to consistently provide them with the inventory that they need to make money. Um, and then the next question that came up was, can your work evolve over time? And the answer to that is absolutely. In fact, I don't know a ton of painters who like happily have a long career that they enjoy where there isn't growth and evolution over time. So getting clear on a style and having consistency in that style isn't about saying that you're never going to change. It's about making sure that change is truly a thoughtful evolution and not you being a jack of all trades and master of none. All right, well, that covers the main questions that I saw come up around this topic. Again, if you are interested in working with me, I have a link to that below down in the description to see if that is a fit. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, I hope you will give it a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell icon um, because I have more videos like this coming up. All right, happy painting.